So I've done it again, everyone. I've bought another project car and I can already see the comments coming in down below that you've got enough projects on the cards already, James. So story with this one is I was chatting to the guys at the dealership where I buy my normal stock and they were talking about a customer that had a few cars to get rid of. One of which, by the way, that's nothing to do with me. Uh, one of which was a Toyota MR2 with only 45,000 miles on the clock. So it's a 2005, getting on now, aren't we? Quite quite old car now, but so to have only 45,000 miles on it was pretty impressive and I've always fancied trying a Toyota MR2 out. The story with the car, other than the one I just told you, is that the customer had it parked it up before COVID and then just never got to use it again. So it was dry stored in their garage that time. And they're just looking to get shot. They had a couple of other things. They had an uh, old Audi convertible, but it wasn't that old and the roof wasn't working. And a uh, multiple, and it wasn't the Fiat, Fiat multiple. It wasn't the earlier bug-eyed one that I would have been a bit interested in. It was the latest square-fronted car. So those weren't really in any opportunity to sort of buy a project and make a few quid out of it. They just weren't going to have any real end value. But these MR2 is going for good money now especially like I say with this mileage on. So I put an offer in, sent Adrian over, and here it sits. Now, I did what you shouldn't do, which is buy it completely blind. I literally just sent Adrian over. I made a transfer of the cash and had him pop the car to me. And it has been sat here since. I haven't had much of a chance to have a look at it. So let's have a look at it together. First up, bodywork wise, seems pretty decent we've got a bit of bumper poking out in the corner here it doesn't seem to be damaged into the paintwork so i don't know if it's a clip or a fastener that's gone there but the rear lights are in good condition no cracking or damage that i don't seem to have a lot of condensation in it same with the top light there the paintwork across the boot lid here seems decent I mean, obviously silver stand out like a sore thumb when they've been painted but no, it seems all good along the back here. There's no scrapes or scratches in the paint. Oh, actually, tell a lie. A couple of small ones just here on the corner. This panel. The uh, bumper gap's okay there. That panel seems the same colour. The wheels have got some serious sort of bubbling on. They look like they've had a bad repaint before the paint's flick, flaking off. I can get it with my nail there. So wheel refurb for sure. Brand of tyres we got on there. We've got some Dunlop, Dunlop on that side. Around this side, we've got another Dunlop. Again, we've got all the sort of paint peeling off there. So yeah, definitely a wheel refurb. This panel again seems in, seems in good condition. Has that been touching a bit on the corner? Might have been. Going down the side of the door handle's got a little bit of lack of peel on. That's all. But the rest of the panel's in good nick. Doesn't seem to be any dings and dents on it. Wing mirror's in good condition. Front wing seems okay. The headlight could definitely do with the buff up. A wet sand the buff again. Same with the alloy. What tyre have we got here? We've got a Firestone on the front here. It does seem some sidewall cracking on these tyres on the front. Probably these have been allowed to get flat on the front here. So you either get the sidewall cracking then. The bonnet, or what do you want to call it on these? Because obviously they are mid-engined. They call them the frunk, don't they, on other cars? That all seems in good condition. Headlight again. Needs a good buff. Uh, final alloy. Needs the same refurb. This one has got a Joy Road on and it looks fairly new. So that's been put on probably because of a flat tyre or something. Perhaps it went flat like the other side. So best thing to do would probably get a couple of Dunlops on the front depending on the age of that one. Or at least a decent brand of tyre. Hood is going to be the big question of course, isn't it? Seems to be peeling away a little bit from the seal here. I don't know how common that is with these. Um, something's had a nibble on the bit of rubber here by the looks of it. Um, down here looks like there might be a little bit of fabric cut. I'll have to compare it to the other side. Glass is good in the rear screen there. So this side, yeah, that's what they've had a little nibble on. To be fair, you'd be better off trimming them down to tighten them both up. There it is. Actually, there's not much more fabric down this side and that's got the stitching on it so i think perhaps only a little bit of fabric gone yeah and this side's pulled away a little bit from here as well i don't imagine anybody would be looking to keep this outside if they had it because you want to keep it inside wouldn't you right interior we'll get the keys and have a look we have two keys 
they're not remote but it is central locking inside it's red which is nice against the silver and they all seem in good condition it's a bit of stain in there that we come out with a bit of a clean a bit of a wet clean on those door cards are nice nothing has a lot of wear in it obviously it's got proper MR2 carpets because of the mileage nothing has a lot of wear in it I think I will have to put a battery in because the battery oh no no central locking I oh know it's got no battery is it as in it's flat as so that's probably why they're not unlocking that way the seat coming in from this side again is in good condition this one doesn't seem to have any sort of staining on it at all there's no wear on the bolsters it doesn't look like anything's got in there and had a nibble in here either original stereo all the buttons are in good condition none of it's worn through at all got locking wheel nuts there and a load of paper actually have a quick look through the paper and see what we've got there so on the logbook three former keepers i didn't show obviously just to prevent any issues there so what's this here this is like a a folder from toyota with sleeves in it for you to put your stuff in i guess approved used toyota so we went through the approved side of things and that is roundswell toyota which is a local toyota dealership in 2008 so that's a certificate for, that's a folder for you put your v5 in which they haven't used but okay it's got these little sleeves in it and some service area so there's nothing actually history wise in it it's just a book provided by toyota that one so look at this one here got another reg document presumably a previous one again this looks like it's just paperwork from toyota but nice to have all the original books all the original handbooks so we've got some paperwork here let's see what this is in terms of history so we've got a service and an MOT from 2019. They uh, replaced the engine oil and filter. And that's probably probably the last time before it was parked up, I would have thought. Another service in 2018. Got service here in 2016 from Toyota. Toyota service in 2017 where they did coolant, handbrake cable, discs and pads by the looks of it. Actually, there's no oil and filters on that one, so it's... Uh, more maintenance work i think right so we've got service history there without going through all of them from about 2009 to 2020 of services so that's a really good history i think it's not obviously 100 percent full but i imagine toyota might hold some pre 2009 and that would get you up to nearly full service history by the couple of years it's parked up over covid so i put a jump pack to the uh, battery so we can see the exact mileage. I sold you a pup. It's 54,000 miles. I think I said 45, didn't I? So 54,000 miles, but still super low. I think I did price it on 50,000 miles. I can't remember now. We've got a bit of dryness here. I'll just notice on top of the steering wheel where the leather's dried out a bit. I wonder if we could feed it to get that to come back a bit. Because I like all the originality in here. If we... Oh, I can hear an aerial going. And the original stereo is powering up. Seems that works. Yeah. So that's all working. So the blowers work. Yeah, blowers are working. Uh, the electric window's working. Yeah. There's a button there. So the electric seems to be working. Also we've got mirror. Yeah, all the electrics are working, which we'd expect from a Toyota, wouldn't we, I guess? So that's good. So the next question is, is it a runner driver? Because genuinely, I <laughs> have no idea. She told me the battery was dead, so they couldn't move it, and the tar was flat. Adrian took a jump pack, and a, um, he took a jump pack and put some air in the tyres. He said it ran enough to get him on the trailer, but it kept wanting to cut out, which he thought was just a battery, but it could be something more serious than that. So... Let's get a better battery on it and give it a go. So underneath we can see, so getting underneath, which is what everybody's gonna be questioning, we can see a lot of surface rust on all of the components. They really are crusty here. And what's the other side like? It's all the same. It's all pretty darn crusty. Let's have a look at the sills. So sills don't look too bad. There's a bit here, the back, 
but down the length of the sill it seems to be all good so worst case is there's a little bit at the very back here but I don't actually think that goes through I think that's just a bit of surface let's check the other side so other side again the sill seems solid all the way down gets a little crusty at the very very end if you can see that at the back there but the floor pans look good front subframe looks okay Again, a lot of surface rust, so a lot of wire brushing down, I'd say. Right, we know battery is dead as a dodo, so that's the first thing that's got to be changed out. Coolant is a nice colour on the right level. Oil, oil, oil. Could all do with a nice clean up in here. Oil is super, super clean. Focus. And at the right level. So. Looks like servicing is decent on this. Come on, go back in. It's a lot of surface rust. Well, that's not surface rust, that's shield all rusty. It'd be nice to put a new one on there just to tidy things up. But I can't see any oil round anything here. Rocker cover and so forth all seem to be good. Just a lot of surface rust on the components here. Do with nice little sort of strip down and tidy up, couldn't it? Right, let's get the battery swapped out. By the way, if you haven't got one of these and you play with cars, get one. I'll put a link to it on Amazon in the description down below. Probably my favourite tool I've got. Now this battery is obviously the wrong size and it's not secure, but it's um, just the purpose of starting the car. We'll get the right battery for it. I suspect we're going to need some fresh fuel, but I don't think I've got any kicking around. I'll double check, but I'm not sure I've got any fresh fuel. Right, number one problem we got is I don't fit in this. I've driven a lot of sports cars that drive MGBs, but this is, without a shadow of a doubt, the tightest fit I've had. Even I think I was even more comfortable in a cappuccino. I need to double check the seat isn't in a high setting or something. Two seconds. And that's it, I think it's all I've got until I, I'll try playing around with it a bit more later on. Let's uh, see where we are with the power. Everything's lighting up. It's fuel, it says half a tank of fuel in it, but that's going to be so old. Oh, there we go. It's actually idling all right, considering the probably crappy old fuel it's on. Let's move it around a little bit, see what the brakes in that light. Oh dear, no clutch. So our clutch is either seized on, or the slave centre just gone. Well, let's put a kibosh on it all, isn't it? Mind you, Adrian said he drove it on, so I might need to give him a quick call. And did he do it in gear with the engine off? Let's just try that. That seems to have freed it up. It might have been stuck, so I put it in gear basically and started it. It seems to have freed it up. Clutch was probably sticking a little bit few miles on it might free that up we're away yeah it's changing gear right now so I think like I say just in case we're putting a few miles on it and uh, well, a few drives around the car park for the moment till it gets an MOT and uh, see if that frees it up or not brakes they're there it's stopping all right they're a bit graunchy obviously as you'd expect but they're there. I thought I could hear the engine. I've still got the boot open. <laughs> yeah, we're getting gears all right now. So it's just, like I say, clutches are sticking a bit. That's all right, that's a relief. I didn't want to have to do a clutch. Ideally, I might still have to, we don't know, do we? seatbelt on to save you guys getting your ears bashed. Yeah. I'm not feeling anything in the suspension that's bad. It's got some pep actually. It's picking up really nicely. Really nicely. Considering like I say it's old fuel. 
sounds nice. And the brakes have already started to lose their graunchiness. Again, it's another thing that might just come back from a little bit of driving. And that clutch and box feels absolutely fine now. You, when you drive old MGBs and you let them sit around, you uh, start to get used to having to unbrake clutches off, sticking clutches off. Yeah, I think those brakes were, you know, in terms of pressure, there's loads of pressure there. All the seals feel like they're good. And the fluid, I mean, the fluid probably will benefit from a drain and a replacement, but you wouldn't tell off really, because. So there we have it, good runner driver as it seems at least around here it is a good enough runner driver the brakes are free the clutch is free um it'll go through the gears okay but i did say drop it down to the lads have the lads do the work on it get it through an mot see what it needs but is that the thing to do with it i mean the other idea is that we let an enthusiastic take it on as a project enthusiast take it on as a project and let them go hell for leather on it because really what well, you know get it on a little ramp at home or get it on axle stands drop everything off underneath it wire brush it fully down powder coat it or paint it up really nicely bolt it all on again get the wheels off get them fully refurbished give the machine polish on the bodywork get in start stripping stuff off inside the engine bay detailing that up put it all back together again and then you've got a near full service history mr2 in excellent condition with low mileage a dealer can do it because a consumer's never going to pay him the money to cover the amount of labour and time involved in doing that. A dealer could do what you know I was talking about, which is get it down there, get them to give it a basic wire brush off, a stone chip, get it through an MOT, paint the wheels up maybe. But no one would ever pay the premium to do what I was talking about, what an enthusiast might do with the car. So there's an option there to do that where you just make a little bit of money out of it, just turn it around quickly. I've got no time in it, so I don't need to make a lot of cash on it. And you just let the enthusiast take it on. Or... You go down and get the work done, but then obviously you have to get the retail premium for it. So comment down below. I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are. Where's my finger? There. <laughs> comment down below. I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are. Do you think I was right to grab it? And do you think I was right to grab a low mileage MR2 when it was on offer? Alone. Perhaps you think I should have left it well enough alone in its home where it was at the time. As always, massive thanks for watching. If you want to know what happens with it, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget that the raffle for our 2014 Mini Cooper S Roadster Convertible is still ongoing. You can win this Mini Cooper S. It's only got about 50,000 miles in it, I think it is. It'll come out to you with a brand new MOT and a six-month warranty-wise package. When you enter the raffle, you will be supporting our charity this month, which is K9 Focus, which helps rescue and place dogs. Should you decide you just want to get involved, you don't really want the car, there is an alternative prize of £3,000 cash and about a grand's worth of top Don diagnosis equipment. There will be a link in the video description down below so you can get involved.